Okay, can you ask people to come in? We, we need to start. We'll be getting short of time. It only eats into the Q&A afterwards. Okay. Well, we have an interesting person here with us now, uh, a person who is not just a photographer, but has been involved with children's festivals, with music, uh, holds concerts, and a whole, whole range of things. But I, I, I want to start from a slightly different space in the sense that in trying to put together a festival such as this, obviously we struggle. We have limited resources. We, we cannot invite people uh, as such. Uh, but what happens is that it's relatively easier to get people from wealthier countries because they have embassies, they have cultural centers who are prepared to support <laughs> initiatives like, like ours, but they will only support their own nationals. So the Alias Francaise will support French artists, uh, British Council will support British artists, etc., etc. So countries which do not have those uh, resources uh, find it, or artists from people from those countries find it very difficult. So we have made a deliberate effort to try and get people from Latin America, Africa, and other Asian countries and support them in one uh, festival. I think it is important to challenge that hegemony that Western Europe and North America has had traditionally in photography. So for that reason, as well as others, it's very important for us to have uh, Lasagna here, Igor Lasagna Diera. He's part of a new generation of African cultural operators proactively promoting the arts and culture in Mali. I mentioned uh, the fact that he, he's involved in, uh, with music, and uh, I think the International F Festival of Children's Literature and things like that. Uh, but I also uh, want to remind you that he's from Bamako, and for a long time that has been one place that where, which has been very, very active, particularly in terms of photography, but generally in terms of the arts, specifically in West Africa, but in Africa in general. So, uh, Lasagna, all yours. Okay, thank, uh, thank you. Thank you very much. So, I don't know exactly where I should start, but because it's a very emotional speech for me, because when I was a teenager a long, long time ago, and I was uh, in a French school in Côte d'Ivoire, and we saw the movie from Mahamat Gandhi. So, since that is one of my dreams to come this area of the world, and I really want to thank you a lot for making this dream come reality. So I'm very happy and very glad and honored to be here. So my presentation will be, uh, yeah, that's Shubu uh, Uporama, uh, because language is also the big challenge and the big barrier. Lufo, one of my guides, explained me the, the meaning of that. And it was so beautiful and so powerful, I think. And also, I, I like the way of Bengali's right. It's very, very nice. So, and uh, that's my beginning to, 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 uh, to welcome in this uh, country. So, this is Bamako, uh, the place where I'm living is a, is a urban village. I mean, I don't know the city, uh, but it's the place where the Biennale happen every year. But to know where is Bamako, so this is West Africa. I'm sorry to talk about the region, but I'm from part of this region. Nigeria, Cote d'Ivoire, Guinea, Togo, you know, it's a vibrant, region in the continent because we have two major events in Burkina there is a cinema festival the big one the next is in March in Cote d'Ivoire in Abidjan there are youth event about music who call Massa 
in Mali, we, we, we have a Biennale African Photography. So, <clears throat> what we hear about the story of uh, <coughs> African photography, I think it starts uh, the same year in Europe. Uh, I could say in the early 1814. So, and that time, you know, the one of the first photographer, he was an architect, and he was also a kind of scientific, and he tried to document by, by taking picture. He was a drawing person, and also when he started to make picture, it was very difficult for him, because at that time, you know, uh, European people take most of the ethnologic picture, you know, the way to, to, to put this kind of lady in this uh, scene, it was not easy for him. His name is uh, uh, Pierre Tremo. So, you know, and those times, it was just after decorative, you know, this kind of picture show really, I mean, it's not, I will let you appreciate it in yourself. So, yeah. And after that, many years near the independence, uh, Bamako starting to be a first photographer. You know, this, is, this man is named uh, Dambele, is the one of the first early who start to, to develop picture in, in, in Bamako. And what happened, he teach this man this is Seydou Keita, I think, is the one of the godfather of African photography. Uh, the story was in New York. One of uh, European collector uh, see his image, and they was looking with the author of this picture. And they come to Mali, and they try to, to, to make research. And they go to Malik Sidibe, because someone tell them that it should be Malik Sidibe. Malik Sidibe, no, it's not me, it's my big brother, it's Seydou Keita. And they bring him to Seydou Keita. So, and now Seydou Keita also is a very great, famous <coughs> photography uh, worldwide, you know. Last year in Paris, they make a very big, big, big exhibition about him. This one and uh, Malik Sidibe, they are the main two major photography in Malian worldwide known. And Malik Sidibe is, uh, he passed away just last year. And this, sorry, uh, I just back to a um, little bit to Seydou Keita. Seydou Keita, they call him the magician because the way he puts people, he, he has very, all the detail, the way woman pose, the way things, he's organized himself to, you know. But Malik was more to the party, to the young. He tried to show the image of uh, Malian young, um, we listen ad rock music, you know. It was so surprised for people to know at that time, Malian music, they listen uh, like uh, Jimi Andres, they organize also different festival. And just before to close to Malik Sidibe, this was one exhibition that we organized for the Medina two years. Medina is the gallery that I run also. And uh, so it was our last time with Malik. And this day it was very, very emotional because we bring this motorcycle to him and to show when he was young and to bring that one, he was crying. It was very emotional things. And you know, so that's one of the best image I still have of Malik Sidibe. So what is important also for you maybe to know, I think most of you know, Malik Sidibe uh, win a lot of prize. He win uh, Arthur, Arthur Black Prize. And the most important thing that he win also is Venice Prize, the gold of Venice. I think he's the first photographer, not African, but the first photographer who win the Venice gold. So that's very important even for the sector of photography to be more considered is like his art. So, 
I will just show you briefly the, the first video because in Africa, in photo, African photography, there is two, three major photographers who are very well known. It's Malik Sidibe, uh, Sedu Keita, and Samuel Fosso from Cameroon, who may, basically based in Central Africa. Want to play this yeah. Video? The song. Audio? There is a song. <coughs> that was the first encounter in Bamako. And after, because Francoise Huguet, one la French lady also, <coughs> and uh, some people with Malian tried to make the very first edition of the encounter of Bamako. It was in 1994. <coughs> The song is we want to get the sound fixed. I will just try to show you the three major photographers that I took in the very early first. At that time, there was no superstar like there was now. So, you know, there was a very inborn artist because they didn't expect to have this international success at all. That's Malik Sidi. It's a country completely different. I don't see the utility. It's a hour. Mauritio. This is Malek Sidibel uh, in Bamako. Bonjour, uh, je m'appelle uh, Malek Sidibe, photographe à Bamako, en Mali. Okay. J'ai commencé à faire les reportages en ville. Par exemple, les mariages, les baptêmes, les Avec surprises Willy. parties. Et même des gens qui font comme ça, ou bien, hein, les, les, ou bien ils, ils dansent. Des fois, je les donne des potions, comme ça, comme ça. Some people are dancing, you know. Comme je dis que j'étais dessinateur, donc euh, les mises en scène me plaisaient beaucoup. It was also Parce drawing. que j'ai trouvé alors, euh, j'ai employé en ce moment mon talent de dessinateur et de forme, surtout. Donc je crois qu'il n'y a pas une autre technique encore qu'on peut inventer, euh, plus que euh, l'image fixe, ou bien l'image brûlante. Oui. Vous croyez que l'image fixe, c'est vraiment la vérité Oui. C'est la vérité d'un moment. Voilà, c'est ça. Parce qu'il y a un, un proverbe bambara qui dit quand vous partez à la chasse avec un sourd-muet, le sourd-muet, d'abord il n'entend pas, bon, il ne peut pas parler. Mais si vous le voyez venir courir devant vous, il croit qu'il faut, il faut le devancer. Parce que ce qu'il a vu, c'est ça qui est le, le réel. Uh, so the sun gone again. Sorry for that. Anyway, so. tellement évident. Les pays de l'Est de cette période, c'est une sorte de légèreté quand même, de, de vivacité euh, qui sont africaines et évidemment ça donne un, un certain décalage euh, par rapport à la, à, la sol, à la solennité des manifestations, euh, à toute la, la rigueur et la mise en scène des, des représentations officielles que Sécoutouré euh, préparait avec beaucoup. 
photographe. Prêt pour aller travailler pour le dessin. C'est une que vous allez arrêter complètement de faire des photos. Il va stop to be photographe. Si, même si je fais la photo, peut-être c'est pour faire des reportages. Hein. Mm. En brousse. Oui. Vous n'avez jamais fait de, euh, de nature tellement. Vous avez surtout photographié des gens. Oui, le portrait. Mm. Le so, portrait seulement. Just a, he was make portrait. Hein? Hein? Pourquoi? Vous avez last... travaillé comment Vous avez fait l'appareil à la main ou vous utilisez un pied Oui, à la main, pas à pied. Lorsque je me suis fait payer une chambre maintenant, j'ai payé un trépied. Alors j'ai travaillé avec ça. Et qu'est-ce que vous préférez Le pied ou la, ou la main Le pied avec euh, les appareils chambre, oui. Sans quoi avec le, le transipose là, ça on le fait à la main. Yeah. Bon, c'est... Okay, this was just to give you a briefly historical. So now we go to the more contemporary right now photography. So this is my gallery opening just two days before the 2011, um, 2011. So that was one of the exhibition of the off of the Biennale in Bamako. So What's interesting in that, you see the different name of those photographers. Uh, the first is Sami Baloji from DRC. The second is Calvin Dando from um, Mozambique. And uh, the second is Salebo from South Africa, Abraham from Nigeria, and Monique from Cape Town, and Mikhail from Ethiopia. What I could say Bamako could be a capital of African photographer because all of them, when they come in Bamako, they try to set up uh, their own mount of photography. And that is the way to spread the photography in the continent. Because Sami Baloji now, when he wins the award of Biennale of Bamako, he becomes very famous. He exhibits worldwide. And uh, he makes, for example, this kind of work. This is the work of Sami Baloji. It's from uh, Lumumbashi in DRC, and they try to, to recreate some context with the colonialism part of Africa in mixed photo, you know. And it's, it's every two years, he organized a festival in Lumumbashi who called Picha Festival. So this is the same from Calvin Dando that I show you in Mozambique. He win also the Biennale Photo in Bamako, the award, the prize of Seydou Keita. And when he back at home, he set up the month of photography in Mozambique. So now he's also the, one of the great non-photography in the continent. And the last example in this case is Aida Mulene from Ethiopia. She also come to Bamako in the prize. And when she back at home, she set up at this festival photo. So, you know, that's the reason I say maybe Bamako could be a door for young photographers to come and when they win, they do the same in their own country. So I will now just show you also the last, the very last Biennale last year. And this film is very new. It just saw the last week in uh, TV Sync. I will show you some of the movie where is here it's
I wanted to really focus how do we begin to reimagine you know, after the long break, the Biennale in Bamako. After 20 years, I think it was important to take stock of what has been done, what hasn't been done, why hasn't it been done, and what is possible. Um, I came to Bamako four years ago at the last Biennale as um, just a, a, a participant looking at everything. So it's, it's really important to me to be part of the Biennale that was the, the comeback. And to, to be a part of that moment where we say like, we are still here in Bamako despite everything that's happened and that, that this meeting, this encounter is significant for all of us. My first invitation to the Biennale took place in 98. Of course, I was a young photographer then, so I became in awe of having to meet so many African photographers um, and people working with or for African photography. Um, in a sense, at that time, you, you kind of feel a bit isolated because there's very little discussion about photography as an art form. Um, in Ghana, um, and so when this opportunity came, I realized immediately its potential. Les rencontres de Babaco ont lieu tous les deux ans dans la capitale. Photojournalistes, collectionneurs et galeristes se réunissent autour de la photographie et de la vidéo durant deux mois. En 2015, la Biennale de l'Art est directrice du Centre d'Art Contemporain de Lagos, accompagnée d'Antawan Bird et Yves Chatap. Une douzaine d'expositions a pris vie autour de la thématique « Telling Time, compter le temps ». L'occasion pour les commissaires d'exposition et les artistes d'évoquer les 20 ans de la Biennale, les quatre années d'interruption suite au coup d'État et une infinité de sujets liés au temps passé, présent ou futur. La photographe Mimi Cherononngok exposait sa série « Do you miss me, sometimes, not always » dans l'exposition principale au Musée national du Mali. This series of work is um, photographs I made over six months. My friend passed away in October 2014 and I wasn't able to travel to go to his memorial. So what happened is I went to Kigali, which is a place we had talked about going. And then after that, I was traveling quite a bit. And when I look at the photographs I made, it was almost as a way of trying to understand what happened to him and to make peace with everything that happened and not being able to say goodbye. And um, the configuration is because I, I really like doing different formats, different lines of things. So I do black and white and color. I shoot only analog, and um, I like looking at pictures that are two meters as well as like really small, and to kind of create an installation for people to have an experience. Okay, this is, oh, sorry. Uh, anyway, it's, where is it? Can you go back? Yeah, please, very shortly. So Mimi, she lives in Nairobi. She's a very young, great photographer. This is John Fleetwood from South Africa. We have a school because also we launch the program of uh, learning photography in Africa. It's a big networking for photographers to share the, the experience with the students and, uh, you know, For those photographers they, that want to move from using photography as just their daily bread, which is the marriage, the baptism, the wedding, you know, you know, those kinds of pictures, to a more artistic practice that allows them to begin to engage with a global audience with their work.
John Fleetwood du Market well Workshop qui jusqu'à présent je pense a été la meilleure lecture de portfolio que j'ai jamais eue. C'est des gens qui m'ont fait prendre conscience du potentiel que j'avais. Hope that their work would be acknowledged within a particular way, instead of positioning themselves in a very clear and critical way. And who win the last award is Uche from Nigeria. So this is my, my gallery. La Medina est un centre culturel créé par Igo Diara. À la fois galerie, médiathèque et espace de débat, sa programmation de tous les jours est dédiée au grand public. Dans le cadre du parcours off de la dixième édition de la Biennale, la Médina présentait l'exposition Peregrinate en parallèle d'une programmation de discussions et de workshops à destination des photographes. Nos combats, c'est la démocratisation des arts et de la culture. C'est que yeah. tous les Africains, tous les Maliens, tout le monde entier, que la, euh, la culture soit démocratisée. Quoi. Quand on okay. parle de ça, c'est la démocratisation. So, that's the point now, because this exhibition will open very next week in Bamako. Why I decided to present you that? Because when we make the call for this exhibition, they will say with the Sweden embassy, that the winner of this, uh, because it was a, uh, I forget to tell you also, last November we launched the month of photography in Bamako. So the idea, it was the one of those 15 photographs. So unfortunately it didn't happen. So now I'm here. That's the reason I want to show those images and also maybe to continue in deeply sense what we can try to make the connection between uh, Bangladesh and Mali because we have a photo festival, we have a biennial and we have also the same. So that was a uh, 15 photographer. Uh, the first one is Seydou Kamara, quite known. He make a great work about uh, a manuscript from Tombouctou. So that he was trying to experimental the movement of Sophie in Bamako to show that sometimes the Muslim are not like what people think because I don't know if you know Mali was occupied the last year uh, by Islamic Boko Haram etc etc so this is one of the leader of the the movement Sophie so this is also another artist, he tried to make uh, some kind of landscape from Bamako and to take the same distance far away from people, uh, you know. And this is uh, Karim Jara, he tried to, the work of this, um, I don't know the word in English, sorry. Anyway, those who break the, <laughs> the wood, you know. The, the work, the daily work, they work very hard and he tried to, to show that. So this is a female photographer, Umunjara. She have a, she make things on drawing clothes. She have a very nice exhibition about those clothes, but this way she tried to show the process of how the, the female do this work, who become very famous now in West Africa, they call that bazin, you know, the way people dress. Unfortunately, I didn't put that, but anyway, next time, maybe. So that's the way they, they make it more clean. And, you know, they call him bazin, it's very known in Africa. So this is also uh, Kone, is a young photographer uh, who tried to give another image of Bamako, you know. He walk on the night when there are no people, and he tried to give some image that you don't feel really you are in Bamako because it could be a big city worldwide. We don't feel that we are in this city, but you know, he make this kind of picture.
So this is Amza Traore. He tried to, to show how the buildings are growing in the continent. And uh, it was just experimental that there are some buildings were set up by African themselves, not only Chinese and uh, et cetera, et cetera. So this is also Kone who tried to experimental the young children in the street who beg because the parents send them on the outside to, to try to have money for them. Uh, this is Dumbia, who tried to know the importance of coconut. I don't know if it's the right word. Cola. This is very useful in Mali in different things, for marriage, for wedding, for, it's a code. Even when women are in menstruation, they play with that with their husband, you know. It's when we want to forgive someone also, you show that it's very useful and if you are tired also, you can take it, it gives you energy, so. This is Blé. He tried to explore the, the story of the Rai, who almost disappeared in, in the continent now. He just experimented all that things. This is uh, one photograph from Kulik, people taking a uh, sable to to daily work hard to, to transform and to bring an, in the city to build houses. So this is Say Bakita. He called this Say Dream because he say most young Africans want to be a famous football player. Also Mohamed is here I hear that Cameroon win the African World Cup. And so yeah Sometimes football is an illusion for many people, and he called that dream. This is a female lady, Kumba. She tried to explore the damage, and she find a very old, interesting, educated person. The, this old man, he, li he read books, is very educated, but he lived there. And uh, so there is, she called the goal of Dunch. This is some uh, young artists who try to explore the, weav the weaving system in Bamako, the traditional way to do that. So this is also the female artist, Umu Traore. She tried to exp experiment two domestic lady who work very hard and she was following uh, them is daily life. Because this is photojournalism reportage. I forget to tell you that. So. And this is also another lady. She tried to explore the city in the local transportation. You know the green cart? In Bamako, they call Sotrama. So she was in the green cart and and she take all those pictures of the city. Yeah, so this is uh, the last workshop uh, who we make, uh, the training was made by Dominic, is the one of the Sweden who come in Bamako to train very hard those photographers. This exhibition will open uh, uh, next, Tuesday in Bamako. So now I just want to show you maybe the last one. It's a video that I produced uh, for the Biennale photo. It's an intimate of African photographer. It's a way to make the homage of all African photographer. The music by, made by Tumani Jabate, one of the good Malian musicians. The lyrics by right by Simon Jamil, a great curator also. I'm 
From Madagascar, Samuel Fosso, Samuel Fosso du Cameroun, from Cameroon, et à tous les photographes africains. Special dedicates for all African photographers. Thank you, Akimbo de Akimbi from Nigeria, Santum of King, South Africa, and the big Rangel Ricardo from Mozambique. God bless. I'm 
ಚೆನ್ನಾಗಿ ಸರಳ ಸರಂಗನ ಬರೋಯ so uh, thank you very much uh, I don't know if the time I was lot of morphing to show but my eye disc break so I don't know uh, the time uh, what is the time now so the one of the thing that I want to tell you uh, Africa waiting for all of you feel free to join us you know the next great event is uh, in in uh, December so we'll really be happy to receive you and thank you all again since, uh, yeah thank you very much any questions from the floor Bamako is an important event and we don't always get uh, I have just a brief question, um, uh, Lasana. That's from as far as I, back as I can remember, Sorry. Um, uh, the Bamako Festival has been supported very strongly by uh, France uh, through Alias Forces and uh, culture force and things like that. What sort of an influence does that have upon the festival itself, the fact that it has such a strong French dominance or influence? Yeah, it's a big shame for all of us. And, you know, uh, because, you know, uh, the first edition of the Biennale was set up by some French people who discover those things. And the government of Mali don't understand, you know, the importance of this kind of event to be more engaged. For example, the Biennale of Dakar is supported by the state. Now Mali try, try to give a half of the budget to this event. But even two days before I come here, the director Samuel Sidibe, he said all the time, he need to make the request to the minister. The, the Mali don't understand what is this event. Often the politicians don't understand. For example, Sedou Keita exhibition was in Paris. The president go blah, blah, blah. So it's very, we are ashamed. And we try to struggle to take over of that. For example, that's the reason last year we organized a month of photography. And we, are, we try to organize ourselves to be more independent. You know, it's very shame for us. Because sometimes people say, oh, it's just few people who are concerned. And, uh, you know, it's about money, fundraising. It's a political issue to negotiate with uh, the Minister of Culture. For example, <laughs> the last penal, she don't understand. After when she realized that people like the catalog, she tried to give to many people just for fun, you know? It's a political issue. We are very ashamed of that. But I think in the next coming year, we'll try to, to control. Any other questions? Uh, yeah, I, I was just wondering about the uh, photographic education scenario in, uh, in Bamako. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. That happened. That's, uh, I was also forget to say that in Bamako, there is an uh, African House of Photography. But we have two schools. 
Also, I want to, the idea, this, uh, there is a one school we call CFP, Centre of Formation of Photography in Bamako, who teach school, uh, teach the students to train. And uh, we have also the big conservatory, which is run by one of the most artists known, Abdoulaye Konate. They teach also photo. So, I think, yeah, we have that. And we have uh, now, that was, I say, the center of learning photography in Africa, who time to time come to Bamako for, to make some workshop. Are, are they affiliated with the art school in uh, Sorry? Bamako? Are they anyhow affiliated with the art schools in Bamako? Yeah, I say there is a conservatoire for art and culture. Okay. This is a youth uh, school okay. who you have phot photography a little bit, but more music and blah, blah, blah. But the school, the main, there was one school from female, Association of Female Photographers, but the main school is the Centre Photographic of Bamako. They make a very good job. They try, they, they work with uh, different partners worldwide, and that's the two point now that we have in the education system. No more questions? Well, thank you very much. Okay. Uh, when are we back? 40 minutes. We have a 40 minute break, so now we can really splash out. Yep.